And I'm going live, I'm going live. Can I see myself yet? I don't know. Um, how are we doing? Are we live? Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> uh, We're live! <laughs> Brilliant. Oh! <laughs> awesome. We're live! <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> there we go. Let's get this posted. Awesome. What a day. What a day. Oh, my browser's locked up. <laughs> this isn't good. No, stop being rubbish. Let's get this posted. Nothing's working. <laughs> what a time for nothing to be right. Oh, my browser's locked up. <laughs> this isn't good. No, stop being rubbish. Okay, that's nothing's that. Nothing's working. <laughs> what a time for nothing to be right. I hope no one's watching this yet. <laughs> oh, there are three people watching already. <laughs> Oh, I'm almost there. I'm, I'm downloading the update, folks. It's Happy Autumn Ballista 2 Day. <laughs> Biggest update to come. Oh, uh, 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 it's here. It's here. Um, right. Uh, let's get the uh, let's get the link to that put out. My internet's running really slowly because it's downloading and I've got rubbish internet. <laughs> well, it's not too bad, really. Not not that bad. Downloading and I've got rubbish. It is taking its time. It's massive. It's about 4.3 gigs. It's huge. Just uh, getting this set up here. So, um, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm stupidly excited. Where are we? There's my ABS. Right. I want to get this update list up here. Let's have a look at, at the update. The patch notes are just immense. And it looks like there's already two updates as well. Um, so, let's see. Let's get uh, let's get me uh, screen capture up. So we'll add that. There we go. Hopefully, folks can see that. Can folks see that on the stream? Can they see the uh, the screen capture now? There we go. Show, it's showing one minute to go at your end, IB. Uh, let's see what I've got. Um, yeah, I've still got quite a while to go. It's saying. 13 minutes you must have better better um, internet than me let's have a read though Automobile blister 2 has 1.4.1 so it's not even 1.4 it's 1.4.1 it's been updated twice it's finally arrived the new update packs a mega list of game-changing improvements features no new features cars and a great surprise the 2022 reform of spa for uh, it, it, right in time for the Grand Prix this weekend, will be available with 1.4 as a free addition to the ex existing Spa DLC. Uh, the official release of Racing USA Part Three, we've got our ovals, has been de delayed. Uh, while we work out some new items for the pack, but you won't have to wait longer to do some oval racing. The two ovals already confirmed as part of Racing USA Part Three, along with ovals. Uh, variants of uh, Formula USA J Gen 1 and 3 from Part 2, as well as Daytona from Part 1, will be available with 1.4 tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Hmm. Does that mean, well, 
Oh, okay, um, we'll see when we open the game. Uh, part three content as a free trial for all owners of the base game until they become part of the official Racing USA Part 3 release. Isn't that nice? Freezer have done this before. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> 10, 9, 8. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling the same way, mate. Um, they did this before when they, I think it was, uh, was it Nuremberg? Um, they, uh, they, they, they released it all for free for about a week. For people who hadn't bought the pack, something like that. It was brilliant. It was really great at doing that. Uh, we have more relevant info about this update and how to get the best features incoming. For now, here is a complete change log. And look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the length of that. And that's just the first one. And you've got this. So, um, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> How are we doing? You got it! Oh, I'm so jealous of you! Okay, so let's see. Um, cars added. Added Formula USA. Gen 1-3 short oval speedway and super speedway configurations. So we've now got different aero kits for the car, which are going to be apparently visual and physical as well. Added the Genetta G55 GT3 to the GT Open class, so uh, that will go with the with the Ultimate. Um, added the Mini Cooper 1965 to the Copa Classic B class that, with slick tyres as well. Brilliant, because the other, well the other Mini's just got your normal tyres on it. Added Vul Vulcan truck to Copa Truck Classics. Don't know much about, about much about this. I'm so excited I can't speak, um, but. Um, don't know much about this fictional. It's a fictional truck, apparently, the Vulcan, if I read it right earlier on. Um, and added the Mercedes AMG GT4 to the GT4 class. I really like that car in um, in uh, a set of course of composition, so I'm looking forward to driving that. Tracks added, uh, worldwide technology, raceway, speedway, uh, road course configurations and speedway configurations. Uh, just got that track in R-Fact 2 and I've been loving it. So I'm really interested to see how um, Reza present this track. Um, added Auto Club Speedway, speedway and road course. Uh, this is not a track that I'm familiar with, um, but I am familiar with Daytona. Uh, definitely have that in R-Fact 2 as well. So we've got the O layout of that now as well um, how are we doing on the download mm, getting there getting there um, general added full course yellow support and of course we, we definitely need that for the ovals so I wonder how well that's going to be implemented we'll have to try that later when I run a server added support for cars to use different aero paddocks depending on track Brilliant. Um, fixed bug allowing player livery to be selected by AI in championships. That's good because you won't get confused that someone else is driving you your car. <laughs> uh, added low downforce aero packets. Packages. Oh, right. To the Formula V12, Formula V10, Gen 1, Formula V10, Gen 2 classes. Affects physics and defaults of both player and AI. Well, that's... I, I didn't expect it to be rolled out over those classes as well. Live track developments, this should be interesting. Added support for custom min max grip ranges per track to account for tarmac quality, dirtiness, maintenance, and other such variables from to track to track. Well, that's that's really going above and beyond detail there, isn't it? Um, that's fantastic. Adjusted baseline, minimal grip and range. Generally lower minimum grip, higher peak, slightly slower build up. Okay. Um, offline isn't as globally poor grip as it was before. Right, okay, I did hear some people complaining about this, so um, that'll be interesting when we get the server going. Adjusted live track presets for better scaling and set light rubber as baseline starting point instead of green. Oh, hang on, adjusted live track presets for better scaling and set light rubber as baseline starting point instead of green in default progression. As and configuration. Right, okay, so you will start out with a bit of rubber on the track unless you choose green by the looks of it. Uh, fixed potential freeze with a new when a new participant joins multiplayer session. Well, session is already in progress. That's good. That's always good. Um, no one wants it freezing, you know, when people are joining. Um, added some mitigation to help reduce extreme wheel movement of remote clients in multiplayer. I wonder if that means, because there's been a few times when I've run a server 
that um, that um, uh, if I've got AI on track, if me and my friend Pete, for instance, are just me and him racing on track, and we put the AI on, he will always complain that you can see the wheels of the AI cars whilst they're going straight, just turning hard left or hard right. So hopefully that's fixed that because that's kind of an immersion breaker. UI and Hub extended opponent settings to allow users to set number of AI vehicles per class in single player. That's great. That's going to mean so if if you want a multi-class grid, you can choose the exact number of it, of cars from each class. Um, so that's fantastic. Even more customizable grips. Uh, opponent aggression setting now uses five pre five predefined levels rather than a zero to one hundred slider. Hmm. Not sure if I'm that keen on that. I don't know. Might be great, but I don't know. Hmm. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it might be brilliant. Um, enabled seat mirror adjustment for non-VR users. So as well as being able to adjust your mirrors in the cockpit, you can now do it in your pancake mode when you're on the screen, which is great for me because there are certain cars. There's a McLaren, for instance, uh, one of the Formula One cars, where the mirrors are just pointing just too far down. So um, now I'll be able to get up for my seating position on the screen. So I'll be able to see that now. That's brilliant. I've been wanting that for a while. Uh, fixed livery limit warning, not displaying on opponent settings screen. Right, so that'll tell you whether you're doubling up on your liveries or not. Doesn't bother me too much that, but it's a nice thing to have. Very nice thing to have. Prevented livery name from expanding beyond container bounds on the livery section. That's just a bit of housekeeping then. Uh, revised vehicle information according to latest physics adjustments. That's nice that they're keeping all the small details going there. Okay. And IB's already got the Merc going. Does it sound that good, does it? Fantastic. How am I doing on my download? I'm way behind you, mate. Way behind you. Okay, so um, it's because I'm streaming. It's because I'm streaming at the same time, isn't it? Um, physics, here we go. Oh, this is massive. Fully revised physics for caterums. Brilliant. I'm oh, really, really interested to see how they work, especially compared to the new catering for R Factor 2 as well, which I've been mucking about with. ACR Camaro, that's the tiny little cars there. Um, GT Classics, vintage uh, touring cars, street cars. Ooh, street cars. Ooh. They've not been looked at for a while. Revised tyre thermodynamics covering ideal temperature ranges, heating and cooling rates, and fallout rates when outside of the ideal operating window. Now, this is something I'm massively interested in because for, for, since the last update, the GT3 cars, um, as soon as the tyre temperatures on the rears get to about 90, um, it, say if you're at Donington with a track which is at about 42 45 degrees you know really quite hot they'll get up to 90 degrees by your third lap but the moment they get there it's like someone's flicked on a script switch rather than the gradual fall off of grip and you, you you just completely lose your back end straight away no warning don't even have to be trail breaking you know around the hairpins so i'm really interested to see in that um added qualification soft medium and hard compounds to f classics and medium and hard compounds for F Reza, hard compounds for F12 and F10, both gens. Right, so we've got qualification tyres, awesome. Added bespoke wet compound records for Formula Classic, Formula 10, uh, Formula Reza, uh, Formula 3, Prototype 2, G4, Sprint Race, all of that. Fantastic. Um, how are we doing here? Okay, and just check that again. Well, now it's telling me that I've, I've downloaded the whole thing down here, but it's all right. It's now patching 38%. So it's all downloaded. Brilliant. We'll be there soon. Um, further development to Formula V. Good, because I think they need it. Um, some graphical issues with that car. Copa Fusca. Love that car. Uno's Opala 79. Excellent. Old stock. Excellent. I love the Opalas. Uh, a TSI Cup. Street cars. Right. Okay. And street cars. Brilliant. Revised various existing compounds, GTE, GT1, Formula Ultimate, both gens, Super V8, Stock Car 19, revised wet and into every all the tyres have been, everything's, it's just, this is just massive. Um, extensive engine revisions, torque, compression curbs, inertia, turbo models, fuel consumption, heating and cooling rates and associated wear to GTE, GT3, GT4, GT1, Porsche Cup, uh, just look at that Cadillac. DPI sprint. Wow. 
practically everything. Fix the bug to extreme engine cooling. That's good. Bug fix is always good. Uh, revised clutch limited slip differential models on vintages, retros, Cadillacs, pro uh, prototypes, BMW 2002 Turbo. Wow. Corvette C's catering super, super light. Wow. Okay. So that should... Uh, that's going to be interesting. Um, radiator, change radiator and brake ducting ranges to 5% increments for cars that have it adjustable. Brilliant. Um, that'll, we'll be opening those up on the hot tracks to keep those rear tyres cool. And the brakes. Added throttle maps for all cars that still missed it. Right. Okay. So we're getting adjustable throttle maps. But why aren't... I would have thought they'd be on the GT. There's not mentioned the GT3s there. I thought they'd be on the GT3, GTE, GT3, and GT4. All right, I, I thought they were going to update the balance performance just for the GT3s and GT4s, but GTEs as well. Complete revision includes various adjustment to turbo downscaling depending on environment and pressures. So turbo cars no longer have substantial advantage at high altitude tracks. So that's good because you know they uh, cars like the McLaren were just beating everything at those tracks. Um, Cobra truck now features more detailed modeling of each truck's engine with performance differences. I did read that they were going to do some big updates on the Cobra trucks. I got adjusted center of height for the Cobra, for the F trainers, Genetta G40s, various fuel tank size corrections. Oh. Hmm. Let's just double check here. Uh, uh, oh, just I'll come back to this in, in a minute. Uh, okay, just going to pop the live stream in there. I forgot that I hadn't told people that I was doing that there, so they'll probably want to know that. Hello, Canadian fur. What a great day, isn't it? What a great day! <laughs> I'm stupidly excited here. And uh, back up we go to the change log. Where were we? Physics, there we go. So we got to the BOP, centre of height, various fuel tank corrections. Adjusted uh, centre of fuel tank. Height for various cars. Added custom draft production scale per car, accounting for variations in drag and dimension. That is abs that is absolutely brilliant. So it won't just be just one draft fits all. It'll be suited to the aerodynamics of each car. Brilliant. Um, disable lingering redundant one-step setup ranges. Options appear adjustable in setup screen, even though they weren't. That's brilliant because there were a lot of cars that did have adjustable variables and they just weren't. So it was, why were they there? You know, it was like a hangover from the last update. So that, I'd love to hear that that's been cleared up. <coughs> Further adjust adjustments to FFB Max Force in various cars. So they're still refining the force feedback. That's great. Fixed diff ramp angles in GT, GT3 to current defaults. Disabled redundant range. Um, in the McLaren and the Janetta there. Further up uh, adjustments to slick behaviour on a wet track. Always good to hear because that's always been a bit funny. Janetta GT, uh, G40 Cup corrected mass. Right, okay. So that will be heavier or lighter depending on where the adjustment's gone. Reduced rate of artificial pre-race tyre heating without formation lap. 
Mm, interesting. Minor moment of inertia. Correction is full stock. Amiga. I do like the Amiga. The Apala. All models. Lance Cup. GT3, GTE, GT4 and GT1 street cars. Get loads of cars there. Loads of cars being adjusted. Um, Ultima GTR Racer. That's the car I like. Revised specifications to suit new GT Open class. It now belongs to. With adjusted tyre dimensions and weight. Disabled onboard. Adjustable anti-roll bars. Mercedes AMG GT3. Minor adjustments to default setup. Slightly lowered rear slow rebound. Increased diff. Right, so that should give it, uh, I should imagine, less lift off oversteer, oversteer things like that. Um. <laughs> Solar Warden, this is now the God Sim racing game. God Sim, I like that. <laughs> KMW, they are still working hard on this, but I wish they... I just wish they would allow players to put real names instead of stupid Steam handles. Uh, can you not do that? I'm sure I can do that. Um, real names. Because when I race online, I, I race as Tarmac Terrorist, and I pop that in, so I don't, I've always found that that's sort of easy enough to do. Maybe I'm missing what, what point you're making there. Um... Let's see, uh, just a fuel tank positions for Porsche RSR and Corvette. Right, the Porsche RSR, yeah, because fuel tank position is very important in a Porsche. If they're at the front, you know, the, 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 the lower the fuel gets, the less weight you've got at the front and the back end wants to come around more. That's interesting. Formula Classic G2 M3 added boost function going to full boost pressure setting over 100 Temporary well boost button is held. Slight adjustment to turbo frequency. Right. I've never used the boost button, I have to admit. I, might, I, I better get used to that. Added adjusted mass of the Formula, Internet, uh, Formula Ultimate Gen 2. Uh, F3, fixed syntax error causing its tires to use the wrong components. I don't know what that means, but... We'll try it and we'll find out. F ultimate both gens reduce front and rear wing drag to lift efficiency. Okay. Now, um, AI. They said they hadn't, uh, in the development update, they said they hadn't done much work on the AI, but it looks like there's a, quite a lot here. So. Let's have a look. AI can use more than one tyre compound. Ooh. What they didn't before. Strange. Um, although kind of makes sense from some of the races I've had added. But that's that's good. That's great. Of course, they should be able to use all tyre compounds. That's what you want. Um, added custom AI driver names and personalities for vintage touring cars, Cape Classics. Basically, loads of them there. So... That's good. Um, further adjustment to AI movement when pulling out from behind another car to overtake. That sounds good because sometimes they'll get right up your back end and then before they can pull out of your slipstream and, and slingshot past, they're so close that they then have to, then have to break. So if that's been improved, awesome. And I bet that is something to do with, uh, the. well, it, you should imagine it'll be to do with the new oval racing because the AI will want to be properly slipstream and I'm really interested to see what they do with the slipstream for the AI will they slipstream each other properly and you as well you know I follow your line this is going to be really interesting see what they've done with the AI because that, that could be make or break for offline uh, oval racing revised AI performance for Madeline uh, Adelaide modern um, Never had a problem with them there, though. Generally raised AI overtaking parameters and reduced gaps between minimum and maximum regression for AI rates. All for better AI overtaking. Disabled function that was added to prevent AI from... Disabled function that was added to prevent AI from cutting corners, but was actually making the issue worse. Well, okay. So that's sounds a little bit like a band-aid, but if it's going to be better, brilliant. <coughs> AI calibration pass for all cars. All cars. Right, okay, so hopefully 
you can set one level of skill and all cars will be around your level then and also hopefully the difference between their performance in the dry and the wet won't be so huge in relative to your terms for instance with the gtes i'd be interested to, I, previously i could set them at one skill level say 100 and i'd be fine with them in the dry and as soon as it started raining they would slow down immensely so much slower than me their speed relative to mine just dropped off so hopefully that will sort out things like that um, adjusted AI performance for Nuremberg Nordschleife layouts. Brilliant. Because uh, that's one hell of a track. You want good AI there. Um, IB, definitely a different feel to everything, including the setup screens. IB, mate, you'll give me some great information there. Thank you for letting me know that. I, I, I'm very pleased to hear that. Um, let's see. Adjusted performance. Uh, where am I now? Uh... Adjusted performance levels for all car classes with custom AI driver. Restored AI aggression for practice and qualifying when dealing with other AI cars. Good, because they can. I find in every sim they can be a bit funny in, in qualifying. Um, slightly improved AI overtakes of slow lap cars. Again, brilliant. Added table of contents and subheadings for each class in AI driver list to facilitate edit editing by end users. That's good, so that'll be for your custom AI files, which uh, should be really coming into their own now with the AI improvements. Globally reduced rolling resistance for AI on most cars to compensate error in benchmarking AI straight line speed. Further per car fine tuning still pending. This is good because there were certain cars where they just didn't seem to use their full top speed on a straight. Um, I can't remember which ones exactly, but <clears throat> there were some cars that did that. Added automatic radiator adjustment to Formula USA 2022 AI oval specific only. Though well, that'll be good for the how they cope with heat, I guess. Um, additional function differential uh, added functional differential for all AI physics according to car spec to improve their ability to negotiate corners. So they didn't have functioning different. I know they don't use the same, the full physics that we do, but I didn't know they didn't actually have differentials. So that's got to be good. Implemented AI mistakes for oval tracks, AI spins. Oh, oh yeah. Big accidents on, uh, on ovals. We all love them. Um, added new AI personality parameter fuel management that works in oval tracks and is customizable by the end user explained here oh wow so that looks like wow that's uh, that's looking wow that is looking pretty intensive but um that'll be something to look at, at a later date but that that looks like something really quite interesting um but i want to get to actually have a go and get you guys online with me so um IB, laugh out loud, massive days of thunder pile up on oval. Oh, Daytona oval right in front of me. Oh my god. <laughs> Tracks in. in, in uh, oh, oh, audio, AI, remote replay cars now have same drivetrain sounds and surface sounds as player car. Brilliant. Grinding gears, sound effects should now play continuously on H shifters instead of infinite restarting. Good. Added ambient reverb for Buenos Aires and. Hello, Gay Galeo. I can't pronounce that. I'm terrible. Sorry. <laughs> Anyone who's watching is Brazilian. Um, Galeo. Uh, removed artificial reverb parameters from Adelaide, Imola, Interlagos, Montreal tracks. I haven't heard much reverb in the, the headphones. I don't know if it's because I'm not using 5.1, and that's only where it's implemented. I don't get a reflection from the tunnel when I go through. Uh, the tunnel at uh, uh, Monaco. Um, oh, it, it might be just because I'm using headphones. Adjusted uh, turbo internal sounds, blah, blah, blah. Increased volume audio effect from running off the ideal racing line. That's interesting. Increased volume of audio effect from running off the ideal racing line. Hmm. Added crowd sounds. Auto club only for now. Okay. Plus restricted track cut limits at pit entrance. Vehicles. So let's see. 
more car liveries. A limit of 40 total for all classes in the game. Restricted available car liveries to a limit of 40. Does that mean rather than 32 cars on track, we can now have 40? Have they have they increased the number of cars that you can have on track? Mm. Added actual driver helmet designs. Stock car and pro series. You can have a look at the helmet when you're going past them. Updated U driver USA helmet model. Puma P050 added damage dangling parts. Fixed reverse lights that weren't working before. Brilliant. So the Puma's now got proper uh, damage parts. I love the Puma. So awesome. I have to try that out. Adjusted the material. Col revised collision. Caterham Supersport added. Uh, fixed the H pattern movement to reflect the correct gear sequence. Oh, okay. Good for VR users. So about when you change gear, you'll, if you look down, you'll see it in the car. Opala 1979 fixed the cockpit shift delight. Brilliant. Love that car. Uh, fixed a windscreen issue with the GTR. Fixed light gauges in the G50 Cup, uh, G40 Cup and GT5. A uh, few bits and pieces of things being cleaned up there. Um, various on board. Camera collection, corrections to copers. Okay, um, I'm starting to get to the point where I'm, I'm just sk skimming over this now and want to boot the sim up. Um, okay, right, so that's the first change log. And then there's another one. <laughs> there's another change log. Um, Oh, uh, thank you, Jimmy. Okay. Oh, that's a pity. I was hoping we could add more cars to track, especially for the oval racing. Do you think that's something inherent to the game engine then? That's just never going to be able to do that. Sorry, that sounded really pessimistic of me. Um, and it's Spa Franco Jumps 2022 layout. That's going to really, really make some uh, F1 fans really happy. General added new ex exhaust smoke types for diesel vehicles. Yes, I saw that on the video. Uh, the promotion, I noticed that the Copa trucks are getting proper black diesel smoke. That's just a brilliant immersive thing. Fixed green live track preset not being fully green. And revised grip levels for the other presets. Right, so green tracks are going to be really less grippy. Reduced FFB fade in time from five seconds to three seconds. Pleased about that because it did feel a bit weird. Um, you are heard. Added official events page. They're going to start doing official events. Brilliant. Updated main menu art panels. Um, and as IB said there, that it was already looking better. Added manual grid for, um, and full course yellow options. The championship editor. Excellent. Added single player gameplay option to enable disable random failures. Random failures. Brilliant. I wonder how many people will use those on servers. Um, change damage scale option to use a predefined level instead of percentages. Oh, really? I'm, I'm not sure I'm happy about I like the damage scaling and I want it in percentages. I, I'm not, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too picky. Fixed ICM being unable to choose auto ERS mode. That was a problem. Um, so that's good that that's fixed. Altered vehicle livery selection showroom and lobby to display appropriate downforce variant for current circuit. Brilliant. That will be for the new error packages. Change vehicle reliability uh, to be based on <coughs> mean. Change vehicle based on mean time to failure directly. So that will be part of the new advanced damage system. Disabled redundant turbo settings showing up in Copa and Mini. Good. All redundant settings are good, good to not have them there. Um, completely reside thermodynamics for all tyres. I'm very interested in that, as I've already mentioned. Advanced, added advanced mechanical damage model for Formula Vintage, Formula Retro, Formula Classics, V10, V Formula Reza Ultimate. So that's not for all cars. Oh, I was thinking that was going to be for all cars. Okay, well, hopefully they'll bring in more of that. Could be wrong there. Updated traction control functionality of all cars that feature the device. So hopefully that's going to work more as it should. Fixed auto lift value, keeping throttle at 100% during auto clutch up shifts. Never use auto clutch. 
so it shouldn't really bother me, but be good for people who do. Um, although I do use auto clutch at night when it's too noisy to use the clutch pedal, so that would be good. Form uh, Formula V and auto correct is semi automatic, so we're blipping to 100% on downshift. Yeah, you don't want that much blip. Added new tyre model parameters for more accurate modelling of slick behaviour and performance and a wet surface. This is going over. Uh, there's some of the things going over that was in the first patch notes here that are being uh, repeated here. Adjusted brake brake deck cooling rates for BMWs. Camaro SS revised body inertia. Mm. Okay, I like that car. Um, that sounds like the street version. McLaren 720S slightly raised front splitter height sensitivity okay that's the car that i've been having trouble with keeping the tires cool gns uh, feather adjustments to balance air suspension adjusted brake heating cooling rates um sigma one fixed tc and abs not being enabled i hope they fixed the bug where when you're in a car without tc and abs and you then change the session to another car that does have it they're, they're not available that's a bug and i hope that's fixed it's very very annoying I don't know if you guys have run into that at all. Um, okay, Jimmy, the livery issue is solvable, but it may take time. Uh, the game is certainly ha capable of handling 64 cars, but there's just so much more to do in terms of AI netcode to handle double the amount. Jimmy, how do you know that it's, it's, it can handle 64 cars? That is really good news. For the future development, the diesel smoke on the tracks can obstruct visibility somewhat. Brilliant, that's what it should do. Right, yeah, no, you're right there. The damage scaling was done in 25% increment, so we've still got the same amount of damage scaling. That's good, that's what I wanted. I'm glad to hear that. And, uh, yeah, uh, IB's just reiterating that. Jimmy, by the way, going back to the AI and wet weather performance, it's not yet there. Yet. Um, weather, wet tyres were last to be update, updated and still need tweaks. AI will come after. That's generally what they do. So maybe a little bit of work, um, as long as the differences, the hard-coded differences aren't too big, maybe we can sort that out with the AI editor. Um, advanced failures are going to be a gradual rollout. Unfortunately, not yet. TC ABS issues is still there. Right, Jimmy, you're very clued up on this. Thank you so much for the information. That's really good. Um, just coming back to this now. Uh, minor power and reduced defaults to accompany blah, 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 blah. Uh, which is street cars. Adjusted FFV, uh, pneumatic trail on Super V8s. Ooh, be interesting to see how the Super V8s handle now. C3R, reduced brake torque and heating. McLaren F1, reduced diffuser, baseline downforce and adjusted center of pressure. Pressure. I wonder if that will sort out the McLaren F1 because the McLaren F1 is supposed to be able to do 240 miles an hour. In the sim, it cannot get anywhere near that. You can get to 200, but you cannot get anywhere near 240s. So I'd really like to see that sorted out because that's what the car should do. That's a street car, obviously. Lance Cup's been revised. More AI. Prevented AI taking damage from small contacts in the wall or in other AIs could lead to AIs coming to the pits too early. Okay, well, I mean, they sh yeah, you, you, you don't need to pit if you've only got the tiniest amount of damage. So if the AI are not doing that as well, that would uh, match up nicely with what, you know, you're doing as a player. Fixed AI, AI not pitting for engine repairs if they have an engine-related fa failure. Well, I suppose they have to do that, really, now that we've got these failures. Improve the way AI retires to off-track due to terminal damage. Good. Good, because they could just sort of sometimes just really get in the way of you. Added initial extra compounds for AI. Brilliant. 
uh, calibration part more more of that more radiator settings for speedways slightly increased ai drafting scale draft scaling right okay so they really are paying attention to the drafting which is important for ovals revised ai pass and performance all at nuremberg gpm vidal hockenheim brilliant hockenheim's had problems for a while with the ai prevented ai vehicles from speeding up when they are trying to retire good that's annoying that they do that uh, fix some issues with AI behavior doing full course yellow. Um, implemented AI differentials. Improved AI response to overheating due to damage. Audio. Uh, better wall reflections. That sounds good. Decreased uh, live play sound. Blah, 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 blah. I'm getting to the point where I really want to boot this up now. Right, that all sounds good. I'm going straight to tracks. More visible rubbering effect. Good on the live track because that was hard to see. More prominent dirt build up on and off tracks with, uh, with car interaction. Good. Um, I wonder if that affects physics as well. Custom grip ranges for loads of tracks there. Abs what an amazing attention to detail. And look at that's a lot of tracks that they've done that for. Nuremberg fixed floating flags. Uh, Road America adjusted curb physics for improved FFB feeling good, nice. Bathurst fixed a hole in the wall, awesome. Vehicles, all cars, corrected. That's no power. I oh, just let me see. Corrected. Can't put musician uh, positions in some of the in three cars there. These are all livery revisions. Uh, dirt maps have been added to trucks. Adjusted uh, driver's head tilt. Animations. Ah! Oh, Mini Cooper S. Fixed speedometer being set as miles per hour instead of. Oh, okay, kilometers per hour. Right, okay. Um, is there anything else there to go by? No. Right, okay. So, let's, um, let's lock this browser down now. And uh, I shall now, no, hang on. Jimmy Miles, dirt does not affect grip. If it rains, dirt becomes mud and it's slipperier. Okay. That's interesting news. Gamer Muscle just gave the Caterham 2 out of 10. Oh, God, that's harsh. I just took it around into Lagos. Loved it. MS2 either works or it doesn't, and that won't ever change. I can't see how I can give it 2 out of 10. It's not that bad, although I will say that the Caterhams, when they're going over the flood plats at... Uh, at Nuremberg, the front end lifts, which is just shouldn't be happening. If you know, I mean, you might get you'll get air off of that if you're going fast enough, but the front end completely lifts up, and of course, the the, the engine weights at the front. So, I've, I never like that about the Caterhams, but hopefully, that's fixed, right? So, let's now get rid of my display capture. Oh no, you can see my ugly face. Sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> um, right, let's see. I want to get this uh, sim started up now. So, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm so excited. I really am. Um, uh, anyone watching the stream... Oh, hang a minute. Um, Jimmy's going into the game. I should be running a server, so look out for a server called TT Live on YouTube if you want to join it. IB's going to give the Kate room a try. Here we... Oh, wow. Look at that. 
Wow, that is properly updated graphics there on our pictures on the UI. Official events, compete in organized time trial events. Active, uh, event long name, event description, event time. So there's nothing going on just yet, but that's, that's all gonna be to come, I guess. Well, it's, it's all just okay. Oh, fix setups. Don't want that. Right. Okay. Um, so I think. Right. I just. I think before. I check AR. Uh, no, I'll run a server in a bit before I go online. I just want to go to my test. Oh. Got a new livery for the McLaren there. Right, so the problem I've been having at this track um, with the weather conditions that I've got set, which are quite hot, is you simply can't do more than about three laps. But where's my blue McLaren gone? What? No! No, I don't like this. What's happened to the Porsche liveries? My blue Porsche is gone. This, though, I don't like this. Oh. I don't like this. GT Open. All right, that's, that's the new class for the Janetta. Um, some liveries have disappeared. I really liked my blue McLaren. I'm... Sad now. Oh, I'll go for the orange one. That's made me sad. That's made me really sad. Okay, well, I have to select that. What, what? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I need to validate files or something. Uh, Canadian, for, I will get to... I just, I've got to just check out this one thing I've got to test before I go online. So... What the issue was, was that the tyres um, at the temperatures that are going to be, that I should think the track temperatures when we get to Donington here are going to be about sort of 42 degrees on the track. And literally after, you know, literally three laps, your tyres are at 90 and they just, the, the, the grip just completely drops off, absolutely drops off. So let's reset everything to default. Just in case we need it. Didn't mention anything about having to reset your settings, but I was testing it without traction control and without anti-lock brakes. So I want to see if I can go more than three laps, and when the tyres get to 90, they don't just suddenly drop off in grip like someone's flicked a switch, and you just lose your back end completely. Ah, oh, IB, Caterham nose lift on the notch. Ah, oh, that's still there. That's really disappointing. Right, first time in the uh, in the McLaren then, and obviously we got our tyres pre-warmed, so they're all about seventy degrees. Let's see what happens. Let's see if the car feels much different. Oh, look at that! Yes, I can immediately see. I can immediately see the difference in the sort of pronoun visual pronunciation of the rubber in line. That's a lot easier to see now. So immediately there's something I really like. So I'm going to drive cleanly. I'm going to drive as I've been driving around this track cleanly, but pushing it a bit that's what I've done on all my other chests and I just couldn't get round more than about three laps without the back end just going crazy. See what happens when these tyres get hot. You're enjoying it for, so far then IB. Positive update is good to hear. Felt car feels different going over the, uh, the chicane just there. Let's see what the lift off oversteers like because this car had quite a lot of it. 
Right, okay, so I can still get a little bit of uh, wiggle to come out of the hairpin there. And out of that one as well. So now up to, it's always the back left tyre that gets hot quickest on this track and we're already up to 82 degrees. Uh, you know, pushing it at a reasonable pace. Not going to deliberately scrub my tyres too much or lock them up. Just want it to get up to temp naturally. Eighty nine, so we're nearly at ninety now. Already getting a little bit of wear. Definitely feels different over those curves. And I think the throttle response seems different as well. Oh and I said I wasn't going to lock it up, and there I went and did it, didn't I? Only, only slightly though. 87 on that back left. I don't know if this is just me being um, a placebo effect, but this car does feel, does feel different. Tire wear seems faster. Um, in this car so far, I don't know, I don't think I'm seeing, I think I'm seeing about the same level, if not a little bit less, than I was with the last version. Oh, a little bit of a lock up there, tiny, tiny little bit. Right, 90 on the back left. And we're going to warm it up quite a bit more going around this corner. 93. Well, we got out of that corner okay. It's the hairpins that are really going to test it because it seemed like it was a real problem at low speeds. Did happen at high speeds, but massive problem at low speeds. Got around there just fine. So we're coming up to lap three now. And this is about the point that it just, like a switch, every single time. Every single time I did the same test exactly like this. It would, the, the, the grip on the rears would just go like a switch. So this is the lap of truth. I'd be feeling it on that corner there, coming out of there. That first right-hander, and I'm not feeling it, so I've got a feeling that it's worked. And that, that was my, uh, the point I was most interested in, so if it's all worked, uh, that's it folks, uh, live stream over. <laughs> Don't need to do anything else. No, only kidding. I'm definitely running a server. You know I'm running a server. I want to get online with folks. Right. Okay, I've really given it some boot coming out of that corner. At 96, it didn't spin. It would be this, mate. Oh, I don't want to get. I don't want to get too excited too quickly. I often give it a bit too much welly coming out of that. That. Fine. Right. Okay. It should be about now that I really feel it and I, I was even trail breaking around there and it's not happened oh folks this is good news oh a little bit a little bit slippery there and on the I'm coming out and that of course is putting the pressure on the back right so which is at a lower temperature.
maybe if I try and really just push it a bit too much on this lap, but it seems to be holding up just fine. Oh, this is amazing news. I can now race the uh, GT3 cars again. I still get the back end out quite a lot, but it's not just flicking around in an uncontrollable spin. I'm at a hundred on the I'm at a hundred on the back left. Hundred degrees. And it's I've got a bit of a slide, but it's it's not uncontrollable. 97. Out the hairpin again. It's fixed! It's definitely fixed! There's a more gra I can still feel yeah, it's it's getting a bit too hot on the back end, but it's it's a gradual lack of grip. It's not ridiculous. The car feels better. I'm gonna do one more lap and then we'll start a server. What do you think guys? Ready for a server? IB, you sound like you're having a great time. I, I, I am already smiling from ear to ear. I'm sad that I've lost the, some liveries though with the GT e cars or the GT cars. I've lost my liveries. I'm going to have to ask on the reason for them why they've done that. Right, so I, I, I've just deliberately got the back end out a little bit there. Let's just try it here. Yeah, I'm overcooking it and the car's just not spinning like a top. And the tyres are a hundred. Yeah, you see, you can tell they're getting a bit too hot because I've gone wide there, but... This is... Oh, what they've done with these new thermal tyre properties is awesome! Big changes, yes mate! Right, let's see if I can overpower the back end coming out of here. Oh, I can and it's a, it's a, it's a much more natural slide! It's a much more natural slide, that must be to do with the new tyre sidewall properties. Let's see if I can get a deliberate slide going around here. Yeah, that felt appropriate. Oh, oh my word. Okay, it's server time, folks. Woohoo! You're looking at a happy bunny here already. Let's see how we're doing on the stream. Hello to all 24 of you out there. I hope you're having a great day. I know I am. I just got to check a few things online as I... Okay, yeah, uh, just had to check the stream there. Right, so folks, um, you'll see from my YouTube video there that my server name is up there, uh, TT Live on YouTube. Uh, let's. Uh, I'll just uh, one more second. I've got just one more thing. I've got to. I've got to see. So, how have things changed in here? Max look, available liveries twenty thirty four. Okay, this is this is good. I, I'm going to start a server. I'm going to start a server and stop mucking about. Uh, no, I've, I've just got to see if those new tracks are in here. Where are we going? Where are we going? So, uh, let's see. Daytona. Let's see Daytona. And there's our oval. Okay. Fontana, there's our... There's another oval track with the infield as well. Gateway. And there it is. Oh. Oh, of course we got... This is GT4s. There's our new AMG GT4. 
Brilliant. Server time. Server time. Come on. Oh, this is this is a fantastic day. Okay, so uh, I want to create myself a new server here. And let's see, uh, uh, folks who are watching online, what would you like? Do you want to go straight for one of the new oval tracks, but try the road course? I'm thinking, just as a suggestion, Gateway and the infield track, um, because I've been racing that so much on R Factor 2. Which has, only, oh right, so R Factor 2, by the way, only has two configurations, this one and the oval, whereas here, We've got three. Even more, even more options than R-Factor 2. This is, wow, okay, right, okay. So uh, we will have all track limits and penalties and everything on. Full course yellows, I'm going to put them on just to see what happens. Not going to enable a multiplayer rating for the moment. Um... Maximum grid size. I don't know if my connection will handle 23. It's usually okay on 24, including me. Maximum human opponents. All right, okay, there we go. Fill with AI opponents. No, just want me and you guys. GT4 new Merc, you're saying. Okay, you want to go with that. Let's do that. There are our new presets. So no more percentages. I'm not sure about that. Um, identical or... Let's go with the same class for the opponents. Realism settings. Yeah. Want that. Yes, want that. Yes, want that. Default setups. No, I'm not forcing those. Uh, manual gears. Yes. Realistic driving aids. Yes. Full damage, scale, oh, no, now I don't know where I am with my damage scaling. I don't like that. So have they gotten rid of 200% damage scaling? Full damage. Um, let's go with, so we've got low, medium, high. That is a lot. We had 25, 0, 25, 50. So we've got a lot less options there. I'm not... I'm going to go for high because I like to have damage on, but I didn't want 200%. You want to go for max. I'm kind of inclined to go with you there, Canadian, but I think I'll leave it on high just to see what that setting now is. I should imagine that might be 175 or 150% damage. Scale. I'm not sure. Mechanical failures. Yes. I'm going to put random failures on, just to see what happens. Um, not going to rely on ghosted vehicles. Manual pit stops. Yeah, I'm not going to have pit stop errors, but we're all going to be subject to ma random failures. Because it's a new feature, we've got to test it out. Um, okay. And let's see, for qualifying, uh, what shall we have? We shall have... Uh, let's go for, let's go for real weather. I'm going to go for real weather. Wherever we go, we're going to go for real weather. Um, and we'll have, let's have 15 minute qualifying sessions and 15 minute races. Does that sound good? Fair enough. I'm glad you're happy with that, mate. Cool. Um, right. So 15 minutes of qualifying. And 15 minute races. Uh, once again, we will go for real weather. Real time. Uh, what is the time now, actually? So it must be about five o'clock, I guess. Here, at least. So we'll set our start time for that time. Uh, we want current date. Um, type of start, 
Standing. Oh, standing or rolling. We're going to be using. I'll go for standing for the moment. Allow pit stop refueling. Yes, just in case someone gets there. Feeling wrong, and we'll go for. Right, so there's our new preset, screen and light rubber. We'll go for default progression. Save that. <coughs> right. Let's pop in the server name, TT Live. Just double check I've got that right. Hang on. Yeah, that looks about right. Public, save that. Is that written correctly? Yes, there we go. And let's go for, you, you said you wanted the GT4, so we'll go for that. And of course, I'm going straight for the Merc. So these are our liveries. I'll go for the orange one. Oh, that's kind of interesting. That's an... Looks like it's a metallic paint job there. Okay. Let's get this party started. Right. Okay. So let's see how many people we got on the stream. 24. Come and jump in, guys. See how many people we can get on this server. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to check the internet here. A few things. Okay. Uh, Musa Studios forums. Okay, back to the sim oh okay look we've got three people already well two and me come on everyone i agree with you peter come on let's go oh heck let's just start i, I, I just want to start people can join as we're driving as soon as they see that we're not in the lobby and we're actually in a qualifying session, more people will join. People don't treat people sort of, unless it's they know what's going on. People just don't join when you're in the lobby, unless it's sort of a league race or something like that. So we've got real weather, real weather. So what's the weather going to be like there at the moment? Track is at fifty degrees. Fifty degrees. My God, that is immense. Right, let's uh, lower the fuel load immediately. 10 laps, that'll do. And let's see, we've got traction control. Let's get rid of the traction control and the antelope brakes just for the moment. So I just want to see how this goes. Low preload on the back there. Interesting. Okay. Higher... Hmm, higher tire pressures at the back than the front. Interesting, okay. Okay. Right, first time in this car and my little um, stream window is obscuring my mirror there. So what I want to do is add in Cockpit configuration, that's new. Oh, that's my mirrors, brilliant. So there we go, there's our new, got a new cockpit configuration window. That is brilliant, that is brilliant, okay. Um, but I want to edit my HUD and get myself a virtual mirror there. 
in both cockpit and light. There we go. Let's save that. Back. Resume. So, yeah. Cold tyres. Oh, let's just double check. I should think there are any hard tyres available in this car. Automatic by weather. So, yeah, we've got hards and wets. Okay, cool. Hit speed limiter on. Oh, well, that's quite sharp. All right, I'm just going to have a slow lap just to see what it looks like compared to the R Factor 2. But, oh, this bit's different here. But got those massive curbs that we've got in R Factor 2 as well. This Elevation change there is seems pretty much spot on. Ah, oh, slightly different on the inside there with those um, little sausage curves, and I've gone straight off because I'm not paying attention to the road. I'm looking at all of the scenery and sausage curves. Amateur hour, hey. And then we've got this really sharp corner here. Someone stop there. I do love this car in ACC. Ah, oh, okay. Right, so I've got no indication. All right, okay. See, now in the R Factor 2 version, there's a bunch of cones there, which tell you you need to take the, the road down to the oval. People are going straight round. Someone's going straight around the oval. Oh, right, yeah, I'm going to do the same. <laughs> Everyone's getting lost. So there's our pit lane down there. Probably be useful to find out where it is you've got to stick your pit limiter on there. Right, let's get it right this time. Tarmac looks very different there compared to what you see on the R Factor 2 version. How have I got an invalidated lap time that time round? Oh, got someone with a bit of damage over there going on already. Smack this front end in. Oh, which I'm about to do. I'm not careful because I'm not looking in front of me. I'm just looking behind me. Don't hit the you've hit the wall. Hit the fence. Tiny, 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 tiny 1% damage to the front end, so that's not too bad. Eight people in the server. Good out. breaking about now. It's strange that we haven't got the cones there on this version of the layout. Some messages come up there. People are 
telling each other off for going the wrong way, and I'm going to crash into a wall because I'm not looking. I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the text there. Silly me. Right, so we've still got this kind of problem here, where if you if you come off the track and then go to the pits, it doesn't let you hit the drive button for ages for some reason. There we go. Right, finally there. Someone gone out in the Porsche there. Oh, yeah, you can get the back end out a little bit in this new Merc. Let's follow this Porsche driver. This corner here, this is what I've been loving since I've discovered this track in R-Factor 2. It tightens, it's almost, almost kind of feels like a bit of a triple apex corner. Even though it's not, it's just, and this one's extremely tight. think hard about my entry to this corner because you've got no easy markers to follow that. Oh, I love the fact that we've got this track. I absolutely love it. Brilliant, bravo, Reza. Eleven people in the server. If you're watching the stream, if you're new to the stream, you can see the server name at the top of the stream window there. Jump into AMS2, find the server and come and join. There's no password. Okay, so it's a little bit... Oh, yeah, I'm really liking the way this car feels. You can really... You can trail brake in this car. That's for damn sure. And you can... Uh, power oversteer which you certainly can do with the uh, ACC version it's got a little bit of push on the steer on that corner there but it's because you're pushing uphill so that makes sense to me at least on that back end there. Uh, we got someone who's gone the wrong way again in the BMW. Got some damage to his front end. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we don't have those yellow curves there in the r Factor version. Could be wrong, I'm pretty sure we don't. This corner here is so sharp. There we go. All oh, right, okay. I get down the inside of the Porsche. I know he's closed the door on me. We're right in this slipstream, though. They're going around the oval again.
So yeah, first thoughts. Just to call, just to ease confusion, probably would be good if Reza could add some cones to on on this layout of the track to the uh, to that first left hander. But it's looking great. It's feeling great. This car is, uh, I'm really liking the way it's handling. And I'm getting a really hot front right tire there up to 105 degrees. And makes sense because I was overheating that tire quite a bit in R Factor 2. Right, can I get a bit of a slide on, do you think? Yes, we can. Car feels very responsive. It's going to make sense that on an anti-clockwise half oval circuit I'm going to get, be getting hot tyres on the right hand side. Now up to 111 degrees, or oh, no, 105, it was up to 111 degrees for a moment there on the right hand tyre. I'm noticing that the the tyre pressures or the tyre temperatures what I'm picking up so far is that the tyre temperatures go up and down much quicker whereas before if you got a hot tyre so if it was up to 111 like it did there it took ages to come back down again this seems to be much more peaky which is how I find that be an R Factor 2 so let's see what we can get up to now 102 degrees 104, I'm going to deliver it deliberately, 110, right, 111, so how quickly is that going to come back down again? It's going to heat up again now though, because we're going to be turning left again. But it is coming down, going back up again. And now we've got some right handers so it should start cooling down. Number four. A lot of people just that corner is is catching a lot of people out. 102, 101. So yeah, I'm really liking the way these tire temperatures now seem to be working. This seems much better than it was before. And seems like we're doing all right for fuel, so it looks like I'm only going to need 10 laps in there. What am I doing though? So I'm doing it's about one minute per lap. So if I come back to the pit box, edit the setup. That was, yeah, I'm gonna wanna put just over, it's about one minute per lap, so I should need exactly 15 laps, but I'm gonna put a little bit extra in there just to be on the safe side. 18 laps, it's gonna be tight. Right, so we should be swapping over sessions now, oh! That is a lot quicker. They did say that they were gonna improve in the multiplayer how quickly a session swaps over. And it looks like they've done it.
I don't want to do anything to the car for the moment. Keep the uh, setup as it is. I'm going to hit ready. <clears throat> okay. Just waiting for two people and we're ready to go with 16 cars on track. Ha <laughs> ha, oh, what a good day this is. And we've got quite a lot of people trying out the Mercedes. Three Porsches. Only a couple of McLarens. One Janetta. Three BMWs. And we've got people from all over the world here. I love the fact that you can see people's flags. All right, just waiting for one person now. Come on. Kados, he's the one to beat. And I'm in fourth position. Not too bad. Okay. Looks like someone said they've been DQ'd. That was probably for going outside of the limits too many times. I think someone might have got a false start there. Can't see behind me because my seat's in the way. Someone's going off in the wrong direction already. Got Janetta right beside me there. Caution, do not overtake pit over. Oh, we've got, yeah, we've got full course yellow already. We've got... <laughs> First race, and immediately first experience of a full course yellow. Right, so. So I wonder if the car in front has been given the speed that he's allowed to do. Because there is no speed limit showing for me. It's just saying don't overtake. So I'm imagining Mr. Paolo Frazzo there. Fazeo has probably got the speed limit. He's been given the speed limit that we've got to uh, adhere to. Racing will resume at the end of this lap. So what we don't want here now is, which is the current scenario in R Factor 2, although I know it's being looked at and will be fixed soon, is that the full, full course yellow just goes on and on forever. Uh, oh, uh, the man in front is the guy who just spoke to me in the stream. It's got up. Uh, Paul, I'm loving it, mate. Paolo. Paolo, rather. I'm really loving it. <coughs> <coughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Yes. Oh, the BMW's got in there before me. I was trying to see if I, I couldn't see my proximity limit. Proximity uh, indicator. I was just having a look for it, and whilst that happens, the BMW's got through. Oh, my word! Okay, there's a car just bounced up in the air there. I'm not quite sure what happened. Oh! Oh, I've got someone on my back end! It's just a scrape. Two cars on my outside. Can I make it through? Yes! And we're away! Oh, I've got a car on the outside, but I'm now free of him. Or free of them, whoever it is. In third position. And once again, uh, that the black and blue car, I think it's a Porsche up ahead there, ended up in the air for some reason. I don't think it's because it's hit someone, it's just oddly gone up in the air. That might be a net code thing. Right, oh no, don't go too wide in this corner, it's a bad idea, it's a very bad idea. Oh, rookie error. I've hit a tire wall. Right, 
Have I done any damage there? No, I haven't. It's a slight knock to the back bumper, nothing serious. Oh! Overtaking the Porsche, thank you for the space there, mate. Tire temperatures all okay for the moment. Oh, BMW gone straight into the tire wall there. That's going to be severe damage. Another BMW with severe damage going on there. Got a slow car there. I think one of the back markers. I love those big curves. They really do make the point. I'm a big curb, stay away from me, I will unsettle your car if you don't stick to your track limits. I love this corner, it's just so challenging. So for anyone, oh, quite a bump there as you come out of the corner there. For anyone wondering how the new Mercedes GT4 feels, so far, bloody brilliant. Oh, getting too close to the wall. Right, can I use a bit of trail braking around here? Yes, I can. Rotate the car a little bit. And use the power to bring the back end round. Nice. Gradual bit of slip from the back end. Oh, not too close to that. Big curb there. So you sort of got to slow down a little bit, then maintain the speed till you get to this point, then on the brakes, tighten up, slow down, and then power out before you're immediately back on the brakes hard for this tight left hander. And you don't want to accelerate too hard at this point, and it's about now that you want to hammer it down. Slow car on the track there. Looks like he's picked up quite a bit of damage. Making time on the previous lap. Fifth position and catching up. Trail break in. Power out. Too much power. Too much power. Oh! <laughs> that was just a test of the physics there, you see. Totally meant to do that. Scientific. Oh, car mounting the curb there. Ooh, what are these curbs are like? If you hit, oh yeah, you really can feel them. <laughs> That's good. They're doing what they should do. I should imagine the servers, all of the servers online at the moment, are actually absolutely brimming with players. Everyone who is at home testing out the new update. On the Reza forums earlier, it was very funny because there, there were a couple of poor souls that came on that went, oh no, I've, I've gone camping this weekend. Oh, why did I do that? <laughs> Another person saying, this, that, they're uh, for some reason seven miles away from their sim rig and for some reason can't make it there at the moment. Someone else said, oh, it's, it's my wife's birthday, so I won't be able to get online today. So hopefully this stream will show some of you who aren't able to make it to your rigs today, whether you're working or traveling you know you can get an idea of what things are like I am absolutely baking um, I'm right next to the window and the sun's streaming in or even though I've got the, the blinds down it's, it's really hot today here in Norfolk I wonder um, I think what I'm gonna do 
whilst I've still got time, is uh, I might add a bit of traction control and see how the, the traction control is now working on these cars. So let's, let's try that. Oh, wrong button. Let's go for medium amount, 5% five, five traction. Oh my word! Some serious smoke on the... Uh, on the on the uh, outside oval part there, I don't know what's happened. If someone's just if someone's crashed or if someone's broken down, maybe there's a big bump coming out of there, much more pronounced, I think, than it is in the R Factor version. So I wanted to try out the traction control to see how or if it's changed, because there are there have been changes to the way that works. Oh, okay, got a bit of a bug there. There's a bit of a bug there where parts of a car, I see a damaged car, I've just flickered up on the screen in front of me. That sometimes happens, but I don't know if that's indicative of if this track. It's not happened before. I did notice a lot of cars have gone into the pits there. So that might be a damage glitch, I don't know. Have seen it before though. Oh, got a car with its lights on over there. Right, so that. Traction control doesn't seem to be working all that well. Let's stick it up to uh, 10. I'm in a decent position so I can afford to muck about a bit whilst there's no cars around me. I'm going to deliberately try and overpower the car out of corners with the traction control right up at 10. See what happens. Ah, uh, oh yeah, that is now working. Definitely. Right, I'm going to got a tight corner here so I'm going to properly deliberately try and squeeze the throttle too much out the corner and yeah the traction control does seem to be working rather well at 10 it was a bit weak at 5 but yeah that does seem to be working as expected but I'm now going to go and take that back off again because well that's just how I roll Another car that's gone the wrong way there, just the end of the track from uh, the wrong direction. But wrong direction is better than one direction. Who are, who are a boy band, not my taste. <laughs> a bit of bucket head myself. It's just starting to drift to the outside. Do you do you use too much power out of that corner that does happen. <coughs> um, and he's carried on though. Oh, you're following the oval there mate. Loving the atmospherics of this track as, as I'm going around, sort of see at certain parts of the track it's it's almost like it's slightly foggy and slightly hazy, like air pollution sort of feeling to it, and then other parts it's kind of clear. That's interesting. Oh, 
going to have to lift a bit there, else I'm going to be in the wall. And a bit of wear on that right front now. 1 minute 12 seconds to go. Oh, okay, right, so it doesn't like you using that extended bit of tarmac there. I've got a track warning limit, so won't be doing that again. This is where it's just here. It's, it's a bit hazy there. And now that the sun's behind me, it's gone nice and clear again. It's amazing weather effects. Absolutely fantastic. bump there is so pronounced. Uh, new message from seven below seven. No doubt there will be patches to visuals on track with details. I think should think you're right mate. We'll probably see patches within you know a day or two well within the next week if not within a day or two because that's how fast Reza are. And I said I wasn't going to go too wide there again and give myself a track limits warning, but I have. it's nice to know that they've implemented that properly, though. I have to say, I do absolutely love R Factor 2's new track limits system. It's probably one of the best I've seen. I love Reasers, but... Our Factor 2 has done some really amazing stuff with that now. I'm getting the odd stutter there. That's probably just to do with my stream settings. Uh, there we go. There are our strange artifacts on the track. If you saw that there. Turn left here. <laughs> okay, hang on a minute. Seven below zero, or seven below seven says turn left here. So hang on. There we go. I've turned my left ear. <laughs> oh, that was great. That was fantastic. Whilst everyone's finished, let's just have a muck about with the car. Oh, there. oh wow, look at that suspension animation. That's fantastic. Okay, right then. Where to next? Oh, hang on a minute. Have I done something silly? No, I haven't. I'm still in the right lobby. Okay, right. So, proper oval racing next, folks. Let's try. If they're up for it, we'll see if everyone in the. If they're all up for it, let's try the big oval. Super Speedway. And let's go for... Some of the cars with the new aero packages. So, let's see. Formula USA, we've got Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. Go for Gen 1 for the moment. And I'm going to go for the Cosworth Speedway. Have you tried the updated GT Open class yet? No, I've not. Um, not yet. So select that. Now. I 
just want to see, like, how, well, how do I select my new aero packages, or is it just done it automatically? Uh, let's see, aero, nothing telling me. Nothing telling me. Okay. Yeah, I know it's auto, but I thought you'd be able, I, I want to be able to see the different packages. There's someone saying about the rating system. I think the rating system still needs a bit of sorting out. Wow, look at that. Daytona Oval. Um, same livery, but I can see that the wings are a lot smaller. So it's definitely selected the right package because the wings are a lot bigger than that usually. They're tiny little wings. Oh, listen to the crowd noise. You hear that on the stream there? It's amazing. So, all right, so it says Cosworth Speedway, so that tells you as, as well as just normal that it's selected. Slick Speedway. So you've literally got one tire on this car. Well, I'm not going to do anything with the setup. Just get in and drive the damn thing. Listen to the crowd as you come round to the stadium section. Okay, mate. Let's try that. Oh, these do have stiff steering. Let's just adjust my seat position a bit. I don't. I don't want my virtual mirror on, or do I? Let's see what happens if I adjust the mirrors now. Right, head tilt, angle, vertical tilt. So. Oh, so that's, that's not going to give me any adjustment because that's. Right, left mirror. Vertical tilt. Yeah, I like that. So 15, so I'll set. Vertical tilt to the same on here. And I want to bring them in a bit. That's a bit too much. There you go, so 10. Let's go with that. Oh, I love it. I can adjust my mirrors. Fantastic. So I'm going to get rid of the main mirror just for the moment. Just use my side mirrors. Hit speed limiter. And I've stalled it. <laughs> Peter, your game's crashing. It's funny that I've got my mate is called Pete and he's getting crashes all the time in AMS2 as well. We don't know why. So, hang on a minute. Right, so this is how we join here. Okay, and on to the circuit. Oh, wow.
Oh, 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 the speed! Three hundred and seventy kilometers per hour. Wow. Cars going up ahead. We'll figure out which is faster, the high line or the low line. We're reaching about 317 on the outside. So we're trying to stay high. About 370. 369. Tightening up. My line might be faster. I'm maintaining 371 on the high line. Right, I'm going to start going for low lines now, see how much that slows me down. Turning tighter now on the low line, 370, 370. 369 doesn't seem to make a huge amount of difference actually oh car taking a bit of an odd route there 375 right pulling in 372 that doesn't seem to matter whether you're high or low steering in this car very very heavy Now let's see if we can get a good lap time through Slipstream here. It's going to be very interesting when I get to have my first try with the AI to see what the Slipstreaming is like with them. Oh my word! Oh my god! Well, a uh, fellow in head there, car absolutely obliterated. Don't know what happened to him there. I mean, without any other cars on track, I'm not really having to try very hard to keep the car nice and stable. Um, so I figure the oval racing thing is, you know, mostly going to be about your setup and your uh, race craft when it comes to being in the pack, because obviously. It's all going to be about slipstreaming and setup. On that note, I've got another car here in my sights that I could get a bit of slipstream on. highest speed we've achieved so far is about 3, 374, 375. That's going to go up now that we're in the slip, now that we're getting close to the slipstream. So we'll see how far it does go up if we do catch this car here. Helicopter in the sky there, 375. Can we get 376? Yes. He's going very high. Tug on him yet. Steel cast! How the hell are you, my friend? Oh my god! Um dead, literally dead. If you're referring Oh my word! Oh steering just went a bit light there. I think I made too sharp a turn. If you're talking about the driver we just saw wipe out, yeah. Totally dead. Now, this guy's jumping about quite a bit now. Oh, now we're getting a tow, that's for sure. 376, 377, 378, 379, 380. That's the fastest we've gone. 382 in the tow. Ah, 
light, yeah, but as soon as I... There you go, as soon as I get in the tow, I can feel it go a little bit light. Good to hear it, man. Hey, it was great to hear your voice on the new promotional video, which, by the way, looks great. It's about time they had a decent video showing off everything. AMS2 can do... Oh! You, you think you're safe enough to take your hands off the wheel? Because it's quite easy to control, but then... It's, it's actually not. There we go. Once you round the corner, if I just turn a bit too hard, yeah, it doesn't like it. It's because that low aero package. Obviously, that's why I've seen quite a few people lose it, because they've they've tried a tight turn and... Do you know what? I'm going to try it, just for effect. I'm going to try it and see what happens with this low aero package, yeah? Yeah, you're immediately gone, aren't you? Um, okay, I don't quite believe what happened there. I got no damage on any of the quarters until I hit this wall here, but I smacked those walls really hard. Daytona is V bumpy. Yeah, you're not wrong, mate. So, Steele, have you had a lot of input into uh, what's been going on with this development update? Right, how long have we got? I wonder what happens if I... I'm going to go for even less wing. See how much speed I get. I'm going to half the wing. Oh, I can't take the rear wing down anymore. It's not adjustable below six. Okay, I don't know if I want to do that then. I didn't look at how hot my engine was getting, but I didn't have a problem. So, where is my radiator opening? If I bring that down to say 40, see if I pick up a bit more speed. Yeah, did the builds for the AMG and the... Uh, I've just tried the AMG, mate. It's brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, and, the, mate, the uh, the problems with the tyres, when they're still within op optimal temperature, but about 90 degrees in the GT3... I've stalled it again. Clutch is so heavy in these. In the GT3 cars, is solved. It's solved. I'm so happy that you guys have done that. Because I couldn't, I couldn't, in in the hot temperatures that we've got at the moment, if I set it to real weather, if, if I was at the track at Donington, it was 42 degrees, I couldn't get past three laps of, you know, normal, steady, careful driving with the GT3 cars until the back end, the tyres, when they, the rear tyres, if they got above 90 or near enough 90 and above, they immediately lost grip like... Like it was a switch being flicked off. It just went all of a sudden. And now it's so much better. It's it's much more gradual. And you're not suddenly losing the back end when it's at 90 degrees. Which is still decent operating temperature. So thank you so much for that, mate. <coughs> Especially the grip, feel and temp characteristics. Mate, you've done a, an absolutely great job on the temperature characteristics. Absolutely brilliant. I'm so looking forward to trying trying that out more. In ex when I get offline, I have time to do long sessions in, in uh, extreme conditions. Now, I've lowered that radiator vent. Let's see what happens to my temperatures and top speed. Oh, I'm being slipstreamed. Okay, there we go. Let's jump into his slipstream and slingshot. If we can. Three eighty four I got there, so that's higher than I had with the vents more open. Now this is the, this is the really good part about oval racing. 
This whole, he's slipstreaming the car in front. I'm slipstreaming him. 180, 180, 388. Kilometers per hour. Oh, this is fantastic. This is awesome. 388 again. Can I get 389? 389. Nearly 400. And I've got to be careful, I don't lose it now. I'm, in his slip, so I'm lifting a bit there because I don't want to ram into the back of him. Plus, yeah, okay, I've overtaken the other car. Now, I'm going for the inside line. There we go, we're side by side. Don't take me out. Oh, it's very bumpy around the corner there. This is awesome! <laughs> I'm sorry to anyone typing at the moment, I can't really look. Oh my god! Oh Christ! Red car, Budweiser car, I think it was there, and then he came over on me, got a car on my inside! Ho <laughs> ho This is fantastic! Anyone watching the stream who hasn't bought Ultimate Ballista 2 yet? Buy it! Buy it! This is fantastic! <laughs> oh, if you've not tried this for a while, you, if you've got it on your hard drive but you've not tried it, you've got to try this again! Um, what an update! So far, so far, absolutely impressed with everything. Only disappointing appointment. Now, still, you might know about this. Some of my favourite liveries have disappeared. I no longer have access to a blue McLaren uh, GT3. Why is that? Oh my God! I was <laughs> Christ! Did I enjoy that? See what people are saying, and now I can read this. I I certainly will. I'll I'll message you, mate. If I find anything, I'll let you know. Steel and everyone at Studio 397. Oh, well done. Well done, guys. Oh, we've got a heavy cloud. The weather seems to be changing. So I'm going to keep my radiator where it is. Default liveries, yeah, they had to shuffle due to livery slots. I know, but I love my Blue McLaren. Now I've got it. Very upset. Um... Oh, I didn't look at what, what lap times we were doing around here. I'm going to put in... Is it, I'm going to put in 18 laps just to be safe. It's a 15-minute race. Maybe 19. I don't know. I didn't, didn't look at what lap times I was doing. You're jazzed, mate! <laughs> the, oh, the, the way you feel. The way you feel. Doing that is just awesome. 90 litres! You reckon, oh, okay, I'll, 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 I don't know if 90's, I'll stick in 20 laps worth. I'll know if I've got that wrong by the first lap, if I'm doing a lap in under a minute. I just didn't look at the lap times. I'm gonna, I, now you've made me nervous, I'm going to put a couple more laps in. 80 litres, there we go, I'll meet you halfway. Right, I am ready. Nice full server. Oh man! First ever proper oval race. First ever proper oval race ever for me in Automobilista 2 and for everyone else here, I should imagine. Got a rolling start. I've, I've actually got everything set to. Um, uh, what's going on? Well, people are all over the place already. What is going on? I've got standing starts. I've got everything set to standing starts, but I guess Daytona and Ovals are set to rolling by default. We're staying in... I can't tell if we're staying in order. There's nothing to tell me whether we're staying in order, because there's a couple of cars went sort of all over the place there.
There is no auto rolling start. This is definitely an auto rolling start because I did not. I set it to normal start. So we've got someone uh, warming up the tyres in front of us. Can't stand at Daytona. I thought that would be the case. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow, where did he get that acceleration from? Oh, bloody cones going everywhere. Car on my outside, car on my inside. Jesus, maybe I should... Caution, do not overtake. We've got a full course yellow already. No, guys, you're overtaking me. Oh, no. Oh, that car overtook me. Oh, no, I've got it. Okay. Am I supposed to be in front or behind this car? Okay, in front. Oh, come on guys, smooth it out, smooth it out. So, oh Christ, that car was close. So this is my second experience already of a full course yellow. Oh. And I can feel the wheel wanting to pull to the left as we're on the banking. Sure that should that car there be overtaking me or should he be behind me? I guess I'll get a warning and get told if he is. So I'm not sure what happened on the track, but there was obviously an accident and cars are cars are going through each other. We can go through each other. Ah, now this I don't like. I don't like this at all. There's one thing I do not like. I've got, I've turned off ghosted cars, yet we can suddenly drive through each other. I don't like that. I don't want to, cars are solid, then they're not. That's one thing I do not like about Ultimate Ballista 2. I really, really, really don't like that. I can see why they've done it, because some people might not understand how to not into crash into other cars on a full course yellow, but I want the option to turn that off. Still, you... What do you think about that, man? I'd, I'd like... I can see why it's been implemented, but I'd like the option... Oh, to turn it off. Because I should think a lot of people who are serious racers in leagues, who, you know, know how to handle a full course yellow, they just won't like that. It's, it's very confusing. One minute cars are solid, then they're not. Total immersion breaker as well. But I can see why it's there. So for a public server like this, yeah, it's quality of life. Yeah, uh, I guess that's... It does, but I'd love to get the option to turn it off. Oh, uh, we're speeding up. I would love to get the option to turn that off just for... It's, I think people in le leagues would like that. Okay, yeah, mate, if you do find that there is a setting, please let me know. I'd love to know. Racing will resume at the end of this lap. You'll have to excuse me if I don't reply after this, because I'm going to be needing to concentrate. Things are about to get fast. Because I've got no idea when the cars do become solid again, I guess. I mean, what if you're in another car when the race starts again. Are you just going to pop off the... I don't un quite understand how that's going to work. <coughs> Excuse me. I really could do with a glass of water. Ah, we go. Oh! Oh, there's going to... Yeah, guys. <laughs> right, we've already got another full course yellow because people are not getting the hang of not crashing. See now I don't know, can I drive through this car or will I damage my car? I don't know. When does it when does the driving through cars thing start and stop? I really you know, I don't like it. I really don't like it. Steel car, car, so I'm so uh, just uh, so, so, so amazed at how well you guys, like, you're immediately responding to issues that I'm having personally in the stream. There is <coughs> the teams.
customer service, if you like, is absolutely fantastic. I can definitely, definitely see oh, why it's, it's useful, you know, if you do things like that. Um, so I'd like the option to turn it on and off because I might even want to use it if I'm on a server and, you know, people aren't sure. But I'd like the option to turn it off and also an indicator to tell you car's solid, car's not top solid, so you, you know. We certainly are. Oh, I've got, talking of that steel, I have, I've got, I've got bloody spar to try yet, yeah, haven't I? Um, by the way, Steelcast, I got you guys an article, I wrote you guys, oh, there, we're solid, oh, man. So, if everyone just keeps guys on the server, stop crashing into each other. <laughs> Getting too eager, he's got to be careful, else, else it's just going to be on full course yellows. And this is nothing wrong with the game. It's doing exactly what it should do. It's doing exactly what it should do. It's our driving, it's our fault, we've got to be more careful, guys. Yeah, um, so, what I was going to say still, I, um, because I'm now doing the odd article for race department, um, I got an article out early, um, about... I think it was about an hour before the actual update dropped. Um, Bram at Race Department will now be updating it with the uh, with the uh, change log because obviously we couldn't include the change log until it came out. But I detailed as much as I could about what was coming, and also mentioned that the steam sale was coinciding with this. So hopefully, hopefully that article would generate you some more sales. Because I'm all up for supporting The Sims, you know, you guys, Kunos, Studio 397, you know it. Okay, right, so will we finally get to race? We're already down, to do it. nearly 10 minutes of the race have gone through full course yellows. 1.2 right now, brilliant. Brilliant. So it's going up, it's going up. How many cars have we got left? Not a lot. We started with nearly 20 cars and we're down to about 11. Okay, right. Here we go. And I should have down changed, shouldn't I? failed to do that. I've got a car right beside me there. Oh, what am I inside? Oh! And he's hit me. Now, uh, steel, another thing, look, I'm hitting the wall there, and I'm getting no damage to me outside wheels. Suspension, let's just... Yeah, now, uh, uh, right, I've got it, I've got it there, so it's picked it up there, but it didn't pick it up on the first big bang, so... I found that the damage can be a little bit, I love the damage, but I found it can be a little bit weird with open wheelers and the way it's picked up. I'm guessing that's down to the, the spheres. Or the collision detection system, sort of being harder to do on cars like this, I'm not sure. And we're, <laughs> oh gosh, yellow again. And I've got a slightly broken car. <laughs> this is pure comedy. I can't, I think it was a red car. I don't think it's this guy or the, the red car that was off track over there that just came down at my inside. I'm pretty sure I stayed high so he could go past, but he just hit straight into me and I hit the outside wall. I've got a friend um, who's just, he's been on console for ages and I sort of introduced him to sim racing, although he was already kind of into it and um, 
it's been about a year now and he's finally bought his I got him an amazing deal on a full sim rig um, and uh, in fact I should have bought bought the blooming thing myself because he's now got better than I do for a ridiculous price and this is going to be one of the first sims that he's buying along with AC um, I think he's really gonna I don't, I don't know if he's finished work yet today or if he's got home or if he's watching this it's my friend Stuart but I think he's gonna love the updates to this sim seen some nutty eye racing videos I bet you have mate my car is crabbing yeah Someone's black flagged. Someone's meatballing. What does meatballing mean? And where's the black flag? I can't see a black flag. Oh my god! Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. Oh come on! Yeah, it's it's not accelerating well with that damage. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to have to pull off the track. I hope I don't cause a full cast yellow, but I have to. I'll never make it back to the pits. <laughs> this is brilliant. Meatball is the flag shown beside severe damage. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> Meatball flag, that's just... So, <laughs> it's so American slang, isn't it? Your meatball. <laughs> yep, dap your meatball. <laughs> oh, mate, the quality was awesome. People were racing better in the quality than they were in in the actual race. Black and orange with circles. I'll look out for that. So is that what it's called in the game then? The meatball flag? Or is that just what they call it over in America at the ovals? I shall have to ask my uncle. He used to... Uh, he, well, he lives out there and he used to race... Na na he used to have a NASCAR team. Right, uh, what am I doing sitting here in the pits when I could just go to the monitor and watch everyone else who's still racing? There we go, look at this. Oh, oh, it's close! Oh, contact! Or was it? Yeah, I think the damage system could do with a bit of refining. Especially on open wheelers. So, oh my god! Oh, this, this is not looking good! Oh, mate! Whew. See that car just go across the track there. Oh, right, okay, that's why they call it that then. Yeah, sometimes with an open wheelie, you'll drive it straight into a wall head on. It'll bust your suspension, but the nose cone and the wing are completely intact. Whereas they'd be the first point of content. I know, I can... Yeah, I can see... I can see now, especially from the replay, how bumpy that is. Remove the guy from the server. If you mean the guy that went straight across the track, yeah, where is he? Right. Oh no, okay, he's been sensible, he's come back to the pits, and he's left. So, okay, that sorts that out. Here they come, here they come. Oh, I love the camera, sh oh! Camera shake is awesome! Jesus, yeah, so bumpy, so bumpy. Oh, 
okay, these guys are pretty close together. I love, I love, I love this. Uh, uh, wait, it's blurred in, in and come out. That movement is fantastic. <laughs> Goosebumps, I'm having kittens, mate. <laughs> And that's the race nearly complete. Just going to check the stream here. Ooh. Yes, Oddy seventy nine. I when I've got it to work in R Factor two, I really love oval racing. You know, when you like you say when you're mid pack, it's just something else. You are totally in there. Cheers, Steel. Good to see you, and thank you so much for everything you've done. Um, if if uh, if you could get a round of applause from everyone, I'd I'd say everyone give Steel and the team a round of applause. Um, in fact, a, a full round of applause. <laughs> awesome work, absolutely awesome, top notch. I actually can't wait to try some of the offline stuff and see what, how the AI are coping with all of this. Um, right, I think it's going to be new spa. All the best, mate. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's have a look. So if we go down, I suppose we just go down to Spa and select the new Spa. So the track map looks pretty much exactly the same, but the, I know the runoff areas are... Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys hung back and, you know, released it properly. I really am. So, awesome. Um, just... Fantastic. Formula Ultimate Gen 2, it's got to be. Oh, no, people are not liking the Formula Ultimates. Maybe I'll change the car. No one's given that a thumbs up, so maybe I'll go for DPIs. Am I going to get another thumbs up for the DPIs, or are people not really bothered? Mm-hmm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to go with it. Just to see how these DPIs feel now. And then there were four. I thought people would really want, be wanting to try out the new F1 cars at the new uh, or the, this weekend's F1 track, but maybe I should have stuck with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cancel that actually. If I want to, I no, no one's no one's given an extra thumbs up for the DPI, so I'm gonna go for the for the Formula car. Ah, I've gone past it. Yeah, the DPI is awesome. I'll definitely agree with you on that. But I want to see what these are like, you know, with the new drafting and the new specific aero properties. I'm going to check my phone as well, just to see if I've... 
had any messages. No, nothing. Uh, nothing to see here. Just want to check if my mate's got home. He might want to try this out. Yeah, let him know about the. App. Oh no, people are joining. Okay, good. Okay, people do like the car then. It's okay. Soft, medium, hard, intermediate, wet, extreme wet. This car's got so many tyre options. I've I've yet because I'm not a massive for well F1 driver. Um, especially with the modern cars, I, I, I'm yet to really get my head around properly the, uh, oh, I can't even think what I'm talking about here, the, uh, ERS system. Let's give ourselves... Eight laps of fuel. Well, there's a bit of weird sound going on there. Is that a glitch? Has someone got stuck? No, it's changed. Okay. Well, I can't remember if I changed anything about the set on this car, but I'm just thinking... Right, so which button did I map for the old... I can't remember which button I mapped for the systems in this car. Oh yeah, this is different. Oh, isn't it? New ground stands, huge runoff area there. The DRS. Oh wow, this really is quite different. They got autumn foliage over there already, or is it just a, it's just new trees planted. What's going on over there? Oh, okay. So certain, right, I, I think there's gonna be updates to this track. There are huge missing gaps in the scenery here. Oh wow, this is really different. Yeah, so this track is blatantly gonna. This is gonna. It's still got work to be done on this track, but that's fine with me because I know that'll be done nice and quickly. This corner's diff. Everything's slightly different. Right now, which is the ERS button? I've got no idea. Ah, right, now it's available to change. So which button do I change it with? I just can't remember. So good. Brand new 
2022 Spa. Who saw this coming? Oh no! Really invalidated my lap time there. on these things are amazing. Right, I need to find out what my modes are or what I signed up. I just can't remember. <laughs> Hello, Marty. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. I've done that whilst I was driving around uh, the new uh, gateway raceway. I drove off track because I was looking at the scenery. Right, options, um, controls, what have I edit my assignments to? So, vehicle. Ah, oh, there we go. Now I know where my modes are. It was on the keyboard. Okay, let's have a look at my tyres. Currently on soft sticks, we'll stay on those. I tell you what, I was gonna say, it felt like the track, because obviously I've got no idea what the weather's like over in Belgium at the moment, but I've got it set to real weather for today. And I, it felt, it didn't feel very grippy, the track looked kind of shiny, and it felt cold. And I've just now looked at the track temperatures, and yeah, bloody well is cold over there. Christ almighty, that is, and it felt like it as well whilst I was driving. Brilliant. I am so impressed with this update so far, folks. Over the moon with everything so far. I mean, even, even like with this track here, there are, if you look far in the distance, you can see that there are unfinished areas of the track. There are actual gaps in it. But it's, it's only in the far distance I think they've done everything that they could to get this track out in time for the Formula One tomorrow for the Grand Prix and I know that even though they've been working tirelessly on this update they'll be working to patch this up as soon as possible but the, the main bones of the track look absolutely fantastic Let's see over there in the distance, you can see that there are missing areas of track. That is fantastic that we've got this layout. And there really is a substantial amount of difference. And what they've done with making the uh, rubbered in section of the track a bit more visible, because you can hardly tell before it's a bit more obvious in R Factor 2. Now this is a bit more like that as well. Love that improvement. But I'm just loving the, the actual feel of the car. Now, you know, I was driving around here thinking the, the track feels cold. And I've just gone, because I forgot to check what the temperatures were before I went out the first time. And I could feel it. My intuition was telling me that. And I've, I've come out and it is cold. Everything's sort of, everything's tying up. Beautifully. I'm not using as much of the brakes as I could. See how unused to driving Formula cars that I am. Right, when I get on this straight, I'm going to try changing my attack modes. Here we go. Okay, I can change them. I'm going to leave it as is. I really haven't got my head around that yet. 
didn't brake hard enough, could have braked later there. The brakes on these things are... Oh! That was close. Oh! That was very close. Just cornering speed on this, you're just not used to it. After coming out of GT4 cars... A totally different kettle of fish to the Indy car as well. So much more aerodynamic grip. Much lighter steering. Acceleration as well is just phenomenal. And so fast! Oh, is that outside of track limits? No, that's okay then. Punch that DRS. Right. Oh, okay. There we go. Got to the uh, brakes full potential there and logged up. Say so, Marty. I think today is definitely a good day to check out the new update. I think uh, today is uh, just a party online for all fans of Automobilista 2. This car feels so strange. Not so a big update. Someone in the game now is saying the car feels strange. I'm going to ask him what he, what he feels strange about it. Well, we've got three minutes left. Oh my God, look at this guy's cert here. He's one and a half seconds faster than me. I'm going to go full immersion and turn off the HUD for a second. Oh, I love driving without any HUDs. Full immersion. That reflection of the sun on the lens. I just, oh, it's all fantastic. This car feels amazing. Coming and going, fantastic. Bit of dirt dragged onto the track there. Oh, a little bit slippery on the. Level of wind noise feels just right. Sounds just right, rather, in this car. Just look at those brakes. Did slide a little bit there. Well, I said the track is so cold that I'm on here.
And I've overshot it. Ah, oh, 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 there we go. How much damage does that pick me up? Lots. This car a bit more fragile than the Indy cars. You're going to intentionally blow your engine. <laughs> I haven't even thought to try that. I won't be able to blow the engine in this, will I? Because it won't be hard to, because this... Well, one, it's probably model to be quite reliable being a modern F1 car but it's got gear protection so I won't be able to just change down through the gears and deliberately blow it. I'll give it a try but I'm pretty sure this has got gear protection. Here we go. Yeah, no, it won't let me do it. feeling of it. Absolutely fantastic. Reza is really showing what's possible with the madness engine. Yes they are! Well done for saying that my friend as well. Very well done for saying that. So many people coming online going, oh the madness engine's bad. Well, it, no, it's not. It's it's, it's really uh, reads are really are showing what could be done with it if you give it the development time. It wasn't really given it to it enough by SMS. Right. So once again, I didn't look at my lap times, but I'm just going to put in 16 laps of fuel, which is probably too much for a 15-minute session, but hey-ho. And I need to uh, just turn the light on quickly. Bear with me, folks. Okay, I think this is going to be the last race for everyone uh, in and watching the server. Because um, the sun's going to be going down soon here and I need to get outside for a little bit and get a bit of sun because I will be on this all night. I might come and do another live stream later on tonight. But I also really need to test out some of the offline stuff as well, see what's happened with the AI around the ovals. Um, so, F1 at the new spa to finish off with modern f1 cars and modern spa uh what a surprise from reza and uh once again to all the folks from reza um steel cast renato everyone there just uh absolutely well done absolutely well done uh, and off we go <laughs> okay and we're green Oh, got a stall car in front of us. It'll be interesting to see how, if full course yellows. I've got a, oh, sparks in the car then. Got sparks. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Oh, the car inside there. Oh, wow, that sunlight. Right in my eyes. Absolutely fantastic. This is a stunning looking game, isn't it?
Right, so I'm in the slipstream, but of course these cars have less slipstream than the older F1 cars, or less drag, so this, this thing won't be so pronounced for cars following behind a lamp, but closer racing. Well, I'm not really racing close here because I'm really slow in this car. Oh, spit of flame coming out the back exhaust of the car. Oh, bit all over the place there. Oh, it pulled around on the curb there. Oh, this is so violent. Oh, it's all very close. Oh, got a touch there. Eight points of damage to the front spoiler. From that bit of contact. And I was a bit shy of the throttle. Getting out there now. See there's more writing in the chat now on a straight. I'm like, no, I can't. Take my eyes off because I'm in the slipstream. Oh my word. Great crowd tonight. Thank you, mate. It's so hard to read the chat when you're doing this kind of speed. Oh, I've got a touch there. My fault. Oh, no, mate. Careful as you rejoin in like that. Haven't picked up any extra damage. That's good. Steel was indeed in here earlier. Someone saying physics are still broken. Not to compare. Sorry, I can't read the rest of it just at the moment. Ah. Oh! Oh, that was on a hell of a slide. Things are still broken, not to compare to GC, GSC or AMS1. GSC? What is GSC? Can't think of a sim beginning with G at the moment. Am I being thick? Game stuck car, also from Reza. Okay. So basically, what you mean is everything that was running on the old ISI engine you're preferring. Because I think both of those sims were both running on the old ISI engine. And I have to say, of course the old ISI engine was G Motor was G Motor was an amazing engine. Although I think this engine is also amazing in its own way. It's got some features which are so advanced I mean as a full package I think it's amazing <coughs> and I, I, I certainly wouldn't go as far as to say the physics for this sim are broken far from it They're definitely not broken whether they are as good as the G motor engine well I don't know, if they're not as good, they might not be as good, but I don't, wouldn't say they're broken. There's certainly nothing that's, you know, completely and totally unbelievable about this. Oh, wow, okay. I can see why they've put that gravel trap there. 
Look at the rubber going down there. So dark on that. Oh, forgetting my uh, DRS. I'm not getting on it quickly enough. Okay. <laughs> Oh, full course yellow. No, they are not good. It feels strange. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say they're not good. I think, you know, on today's market, they're, they're not too bad at all. Are they as good as, say, ACCs or Fact 2? Maybe not, but then again, having said that, R Factor 2 has got some major problems. Um, the new Mini, for example, in R Factor 2 has got such tremendous torque steer that if you let go of the steering wheel and accelerate, it'll just turn left. And I mean, it'll just keep the wheel go right round, fully, fully hard left. And I've spoken to quite a few mini owners on the forums who've said, yeah, it's just not that pronounced, the torque steer. Also, I've driven a Mini 1275 GT, which has more horsepower than the Austin Mini Cooper has, ever has. And I, I've driven that in real life. It doesn't do that. So, in terms of accuracy, you know, which one's right, which one's wrong, Paul Fraser says, sorry for that. What do you mean, sorry for that? What have you done? I'm not sure what you're sorry about there, mate. Um, but yeah, um, you know, in, in ACC, you've got that, that, for ages, that had a weird problem with you know, you just couldn't touch the curbs. I think sir, one thing I can say for sure, absolutely for sure, is that this update is definitely a big improvement in terms of how the physics feel. It's it's definitely an improvement. Oh yeah, my tyres are getting cold here. Better warm them up. Paul, you're not on track, are you? Reza had the chance to gain some tarmac. Gain some tarmac about our F2 or I racing. They still don't look at the physics. Oh, mate, no, don't apologise. Your opinion's as valid as anyone else's. So don't apologise for that at all. It's, this is, you know, debate's good. Debate is good. Not sure what you mean by the fact by they had to gain some tarmac, though. I don't know what you mean by that. But um, I will disagree with you on that, absolutely and completely, um, when you say that they still don't look at the physics. They've continually improved the physics. You know, compared to uh, R Factor 2 or ACC, you know, if you want to compare the physics to, to those sims being better or worse, that's one thing. But you can't say that they haven't improved the physics. I mean, especially since it's, they've come a hell of a long way. Catch up. Well, um, maybe so. But then, in terms of um, in terms of 
a full package. In terms of this sim as a full package, it has gone further than either ACC or R Factor 2 in terms of features. It's now R Factor 2 is now trying to catch up in terms of uh, features. It's now trying to catch up with this sim. This sim now has features that neither of those two sims have. Although R Factor is now catching up there. I mean, they've only just got their track temperatures working. You know, that was a major physics flaw. They didn't have working track. I suppose, it's, you know, it's kind of six of one half a dozen of the other. And uh, it, there's going to be a preferred feel as well. Uh, although I, I will say in terms of um, some of the front wheel drive cars, especially the, the new um, VWs, my friend Stuart would definitely agree with you that they just don't, they don't feel right. Whereas the front wheel drive, the new front wheel drive touring cars in our factor, they, oh, they feel good. But remember that these, uh, the, they they're, they're, what I'm talking about here is the low powered, oh my word, the low powered VW Polos that they've included in the demo. They, it was saying they didn't feel right. I'm going to be interested to, they did feel quite floaty to be honest. And it's going to be interesting to see how they feel now after this massive update. Oh! This car feels fantastic. It's a totally different kettle of fish as well to the uh, original Formula Ultimate as well. But, I mean, I've gone straight in and done a live stream here at the moment that this came out. Um, I would never, oh, there we go, full course yellow. Go. I would never, uh, I don't usually make a video with my opinions on a sim until I've had a couple of days to really test it and really try it out when there's been a new update. So, obviously, there's, there's still things for me to figure out what I like, what I don't. I'm very, very happy what's, with what's been done with the tyre temperatures and the way they react with the surface though. Very happy, because that was a problem for me in the GT3 cars. Dying to try the new cockpit indie cars do you, need the, do you mean the new cockpit options like um, you know changing your wing mirrors and that sort of thing look at that we've got one car with its rain light switched on and the others haven't is there a button that you can I've never seen a button for the rain light how has he done that oh no it's just because he's the one in front I see that's automatic. I would take the car ahead, but I was never... Right, right so I need to be behind this one here. Okay, it's getting a bit confused there with, its, with where I should be in the field. I thought this is where I should be. Oh, you mean the um, Delara IR1718 rather? 
Yeah, I got them for R Factor 2 as well. How are you finding them in R Factor 2? they got this brand new version of the track out. Oh, you, oh, right, you didn't get them. Okay. No, I like them in R Factor 2. I was really pumped for the new Mini and the new Caterham. The Caterham's come out with force feedback, which is lighter than a GTE Corvette CR8, which has a light, a light power steering in a GTE car. And then you get into the case room, the steering's even lighter in a car with no power steering. It's just... So that was one thing. And then the gears in the Mini and the, uh, the Caterham are both H-Pat, and yet they act like semi-automatics. That, that, that was a bit of a big disappointment. In terms of the way they drive and the way they... Oh, well, there we go. In the terms of the way they drive and the way they... The physics of them, they seem great, but as uh, I don't, they don't seem to be doing anything about updating them, which is, hmm. Right, okay. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everyone who's uh, come and joined in. I am going to have to finish this stream now because I really need some food at a break. I might be online later. Just thank everyone in the server. Thank you, IB. Thank you, Peter. Thank you to all of you who've been watching. Okay, um, yeah, sorry, um, so that is the end of the stream, thank you ever so much, thank you Reza, um, and uh, yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed that, happy Autumn Ballista 2 day. <laughs>